Hello and welcome to Richard's Home Mechanics and this is stage three of the little Honda lawnmower that will not start and how to fix. Okay so far we've taken the carburetor off on this mower and we've also cleaned it and it's now ready to go back onto the mower and hopefully see if we can get it to start. So let's get on shall we? Let's get this carburetor back on this little Honda and see if she starts. What we're going to do first because we've cleaned the carburetor out there's no point putting this carburetor back on here until we've cleaned this fuel tank so what we're going to do I'm just going to quickly take this fuel tank off and clean it and then we can carry on and get this carburetor back on but we need to get this off flush it out with petrol and put it back on it's quite simple it's come it's only held on by the pipe let's disconnect the old lever pry bar there you go she's off make sure we don't spill any petrol <coughs> What we're going to do, we're going to take it onto the bench and just see what rubbish comes out of that tank, shall we? Okay, we're just going to give this a little shake about. I'll put a little bit of petrol in it and then just, just see, give it a good shake, make sure no petrol goes anywhere. Let's see what comes out. We're going to unempty it by the filler cap, which is pretty tight. Let's have a look. Now that petrol looks really gank. There we go. Look inside, let's move that out of the way. We'll dispose of that safely in a little in a minute. Let's have a look inside here, shall we? Um, this could be the problem. You know, let's say we, there's no point cleaning the carburetor out if you put a dirty fuel tank in, fuel goes in there, straight into the carburetor and blocks it again. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. I'm quite happy with that. Let's put it back on and then let's crack on with getting this carb on. Right, here's one I prepared earlier. One nicely cleaned carburetor inside and out with the jets. Now we're gonna now offer this back up onto this mower. As you can see, I've left the fuel tank off. That can go back on in a minute because that just clips in there. We'll show you that. But what we're gonna do now, before we put all the gaskets on here, because there's quite a few, I think there's four gaskets, one, two, three, four on the mower, we're gonna link up the linkages first, um, because once you've bolted it in, you can't get them in. So my advice to you is link up the linkages and the springs first, and then get the bolts and the gaskets second. So let's have a look, shall we? Right, let's do the back one first. If you can remember, we've got one there, and I can remember this. That hooks in there like, that and the very delicate spring do you remember the little very delicate spring you have to be very very careful of i've managed to keep the loop i believe that hooks in just there like that that was nice and simple um this linkage i believe goes into here let's have a look make sure we're happy with that no i don't believe that goes in there like there see what i mean you have to bend the carburetor there you go now We've got all the linkages done. What else can we connect up? Um, while we're here, let's connect up the fuel pipe, shall we? Because that's going to be a bit hard because the fuel pipe's tucked behind. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see there, I've got a linkage there. Obviously, if you remember in the video stage two, we disconnected that, took the bolt out. We've got a linkage there. We've also got a linkage at the back with the very, very fine spring. Um, Everything else looks good. We haven't touched any of this here. This can all stay in situ. So what we've got at the bottom is, you can see we've got a fuel pipe. So while we've got access, let's put this fuel pipe on, shall we? Lovely. That's the fuel pipe on. So before we go any further, I always like to have a quick check. Um, that there's no sillies here. Right, so that linkage is on there. Uh, that spring's there, that spring's there, that's there for the throttle. That linkage is on, that linkage is on, that linkage is on, and that linkage is on. Okay, let's crack on and uh, get these gaskets on. These are the ones that are a little bit fiddly um, because the bolts go through everything and the gaskets have got to be in the right order. So let's have a look and see how we get on, shall we? Okay. Okay, let's start assembling up. Right, first of all, we need the air filter. I've blown it out and clean it. Now, 
What makes it a bit trickier with these particular carburetor fittings is these bolts here long, they go all the way through and go through the carburetor and then through other gaskets and then bolt into the head. So basically, um, uh, what you want to do, what I do is I do a dry run. So I make sure all everything is ready for me, all the gaskets are ready so I can just push these bolts through, put it all together and bolt it up. So first of all, let's check. We need a gasket to seal inside here check the gasket is on this plate here we also need a gasket to connect the uh, carburetor to this plate here and here we are check we've got the gasket for that there um, we need a gasket for behind the carburetor check gasket is in situ and we also need the gasket for the back that connects to the actual head check that's there let's put this back together shall we so take your time so first of all first stage is this plate here so we need to get this plate on here sometimes it probably would be easier if you had two sets of hands someone holding you because you're trying to fiddle and get these gaskets in so what I'm going to do put them through there like that let's pull it out of the way so it is very very fiddly and what I'm going to do I'm going to put the gasket on this end I think first which goes like that but you see just take your time just thread it through you don't want to damage these gaskets so what we've got to do now we've got to go through this carburetor like so ah, let's have a look one bolt making sure everything's good number two bolt right I'll stop there for a minute I'm happy with that just have a look around make sure gasket is correct yes that's the first stage so these bolt, bolts should push through, like so. Right, we're through. That's the first stage done. Now we need to connect this to that. That sits on, I've already got the gaskets on there. One and two. A little tip there, um, you will find that they'll, they'll fall off. What all I do is I get a little bit of very, very fine grease, or you can use Vaseline. Just put a very fine film on the plate there and the plate there and it'll hold the gasket in situ while you put it in. If you don't do that, you'll be forever trying to fiddle because as you're trying to put it on, the gasket will keep falling off. So just put a very fine bit of grease or Vaseline on this plate, stick it to it, it's not going to hurt it and it keeps it in situ. Look, ain't going to come off while I bolt it up. So let's push this in here. Right, so while I'm putting it together, I'm making sure that everything is looking good. I have just noticed another bit that I will need to do in a minute, and that is the air pipe connects onto this air filter before we go too far. Right, let's have a look. We have got an air filter down here, so air pipe somewhere. Let's have a look. Should be one. There it is there. So I think we might be advisable to put that on while we can. Like so. And... There we go. Just loosely put them in. Good. All I've got to do is nip that up and we can put the air filter on. Looking good. Let's get this done up, shall we? So, just lightly do it up there. As you say, when you assemble, don't all do it up tight. Put it up loose first because you need movement because... I know we've got a bolt to go in there and if I'd nipped it up really tight that bolt wouldn't have gone in that would have been out of shape but everything keep everything loose when you're doing it up get all the bolts in everything you need to get in then nip them up I've also got one to go there looking good here we go simple isn't it it is not rocket science don't let anyone tell you it is it's just breaking the job down into stages if you've watched my stage one and stage two and stage three how to get this mower running you will see it's not rocket science but when i do any job any job at all whether it's mechanical or electrical or anything i break the job down into stages so i know exactly where i want to get to and what i'm doing it's much easier if you look at the job overhaul you'll think oh i've got to take that off got to do this got to do that got to do this don't stages Carburetor off, stage one. Carburetor clean, stage two. Carburetor remount, stage three. And try and start it, stage four. Good. Right, we're good there. That one. That one. Right, again, remember the old tip? I'm not going to give it the big one. 
don't torque it from there just hold it there it doesn't need to tight be tight it's going from steel into alley do the three stage one two three and a little tug done and again on this one torque it one two three that's tight keep doing it that way and you will learn and feel Confident of how you're talking up. You'll, you'll talk up the same. I mean, when I do jobs that I need to talk up, like i.e. head gaskets or crank bolts, yes, I use a torque wrench. It's vitally important um, to torque it to the right torque because you're either going to strip it or it's going to come loose. But on jobs like this, just use your just use your feel lock. One, two, three, she's talked. Right, before we go any further, let's just have a look, make sure everything's working, everything is connected. Uh, tank's going to go on in a minute. That spring's on there. That's on there. That's on there. Air filter. Gaskets are on. Right. Important. We've spent all this time cleaning this carburetor out. And we ain't going to put a dirty old filter in, are we? That's going. We're going to get rid of that. For three quid, four quid, put a new filter in. Absolute waste of time if you're going to do that. Let me just give this a wipe out. I did give it a clean. Just 100%, we're clean. Right, new filter in. That's as simple as that, clips in there. Um, let's have a look. That looks like that hook's on there. That hook's on there. Looking good so far. Um, next stage is to get this part on. And we'll have a go at starting it, shall we? Okay, before we put the fuel tank on and put the pull cord system on, let's have a look at what we've got in this engine, shall we? Here's the coil, um, just sitting here. Now that coil picks up, an electronic pickup, it's a non-contact, but that there is the pulser. That picks up the signal to send the spark. Now if these get rusty, it will, it's only a little square there, it's a magnet, it will um, affect the spark. So what you're going to do, I'm going to give that a little clean of a bit of wet and dry. Just make sure she's got a good pickup. Not a lot, not gonna go mad. Just gonna give it a quick clean, because that will improve the spark. Here we go, see the little square there? We'll give that a wipe, because obviously what we're doing when we're cleaning this, we're taking off metal, very, very minute metal. Get me a little cloth, give it a clean. There we go, let's see. Check that. That is just the brake. That mark in there is from the earthing out. When you pull the lever, that will touch that and earth it out and stop the spark. And there's another one there. Give this a little pick up. Here we go. I was looking for the two. There is normally two close together. Sometimes one big one, sometimes two. Give that a little clean. There we go. And that may not have made any difference at all, but then it can. So. Okay, what should we do next? I think we well, can get the fuel tank back on. So, that sits on there, I believe, like that. Right, aha. Don't forget to put the fuel pipe on, folks, you soon know it. Right, that clips on there. Be very, very careful with these. They're plastic, very, well, the old days used to be metal, brass, with a little filter in there. Um, I'm old school, but their plastics are just support it when you push that pipe on again if that pipe is tight get it on put a little bit of oil around it a little bit of uh, uh, lubricant just slide it on now that's gone on all right we just need to pull that clip down which will then secure that fuel pipe on like so they're not the best of clips i might probably change this for a jubilee clip i don't like these cheap um, ones on here but that will do for suffice for the moment there we go, that's on. Um, pull cord. Let's put the pull cord on. Simple as that. Before you put it on, make sure it pulls, springs back. Waste of time. If that gets stuck, you need to rewind it or put a new string on. That's working. Let's get this on. That is simple. Goes on like that. There you go. Make sure it's engaged. That's engaged. The bolts. Simple, three little bolts. Like so. Now that, my friends, 
is the carburetor taken off, the carburetor cleaned, and she is ready to have a fire up. Nip these up. But as normal and as always, I am going to have a look around. We're going to turn the fuel on and see if there's any leaks, if there's any sillies. We're going to try all the levers. Um, once I'm happy that everything is back where it should be and nothing is leaking from the carb or anything we've disturbed or worked on, we'll give it a go. Right, let's just turn that fuel on. Um, might be handy if we put petrol in it, mightn't it? Let's put some fuel in there. Don't need a lot. I'm not going to put a lot in there. Let's put a little bit in there. So we have cleaned this old carby out. The uh, carby out. We've cleaned the fuel tank out. Let's put a little bit of fuel. Now this is a four stroke because it's got a separate oil reservoir. So we don't need to put two stroke oil in there. Let's put a little bit of petrol in there. I'm not going to go mad. But that would be enough. It's not a very big tank. What I'm looking for is to see if we've got any fuel leaks. Turn that on. Wipe the excess fuel off because obviously fuel is dangerous and flammable. There we go. Vitally important, put that cap back on. Seal that up. You do not want that fuel exposed. Right, the fuel is on. We have no leaks. Okay, let's have a look. We've done it. That's all back together now. So let's recap. Carb, we had no starter. This mower was a non-starter. We've took the carby off. We've cleaned the carby. We've cleaned it with carb cleaner. We've blown it out. We've checked the jets. We've cleaned the jets out properly with files, everything. We've replaced the gaskets. Um, there's no leaks. I think the next stage is see if it starts. Let's get on with it. Let's see if this mower will fire up after all these years being stuck at the back of someone's shed. Let's have a look, shall we? Okay, we've pushed the mower outside. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. Let's see if this fires up, shall we? As you can see, she started up lovely with the choke on. I quickly turned the choke off, absolutely ticks over lovely. No pulsing, no surging. Um, tried the um, self-propelled, I adjusted all that up, working fine. Now that mower's ready to be moved on to its next grateful owner. Um, thank you for watching my videos, and hopefully um, you will watch future videos that I will be doing on my Richard's Home Mechanics channel on YouTube. Please feel free to subscribe, press that notifier, and we will see you in the very near future on the next video on Richard's Home Mechanics. You take care out there, keep on them spanners, see you soon. Catch you later. Bye.